In this video tutorial, we're going to describe the difference between base reinforcement and calculated reinforcement in Adapt Builder, how each of these types of reinforcement is considered, and how to display the reinforcements and isolate them in the software. We'll go ahead now and launch the program. And in this example, we're going to be using a two-way post-tension slab. We're going to have the program open in Floor Pro. The same behavior can be shown also in, in MAT uh, and SOG. We're going to turn off Edge here. We don't really need the uh, multi-story analysis capability for this example. We'll select OK. And here we have a um, two-way slab. We're actually working today in metric units. Uh, we'll go ahead and just go to the default display. We have a five-span, or excuse me, a four-span, two-way slab, both directions. And before we start, uh, we want to just make note of how we can display uh, base reinforcement in the, in the software. Currently, this model has no post-tensioning in it. We're going to add a bit of PT in the model to distinguish between that and an RC slab. If we go over to Rebar and we select the option for Display Manager, you'll notice that there's some default settings for displaying reinforcement. And we can see that we have display calculated reinforcement shown, display base reinforcement, top and bottom in both directions, and then there's also options for displaying rebar mesh. Rebar mesh is always base reinforcement. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to first just design the slab without any reinforcement, without any base reinforcement. There's no base reinforcement in this model yet. Um, we have under the loading combinations, we have just a few combinations here, two service and two ultimate or strength combinations. So we'll go ahead and analyze this. I'm going to mesh the slab first, and then I'll analyze the slab for these combos. OK, and we obtain a solution, and then we will um, generate our strips. We'll go over to floor design. We can see we have. X and Y support lines uh, in the model. We, we have X currently. Let's go ahead and add um, Y direction support lines. So I'm going to use the new dynamic editor, and this is in version 2019. I'll switch this over to Y, and we'll go ahead and just run through this and add, add these support lines. Whatever um, element, vertical element, is intersected by this red line that I'm creating a construction line here, the program will add a, a support line node to that location. So you can see that's been done. And we'll now um, generate our design strips. So when we generate our design strips, we have, if we go ahead and turn this off, this display, we have both, um, both directions. We have X strips and also uh, Y strips. Okay, so we have two two uh, strip directions, and we'll now design the sections. Now there's there's a difference between designing sections and investigating. Investigating means the program only reports capacity, calculates capacity from the base reinforcement in the slab. So currently there's no reinforcement here. We we want to just run a new design, and we'll design the reinforcement. Okay, once we do that. The program has now added reinforcement uh, in terms of the design to satisfy the requirements for strength and service. So there's a few different ways we can show this. We can graphically show the layout of reinforcement either from floor design, calculated rebar plan, or from rebar, calculated rebar plan. So the, both of those produce this same dialog where we select you know, which combinations we want to produce reinforcement for. We'll just select envelope. And this dialog pertains only to calculated reinforcement. So when I select this and I show reinforcement, I'll turn off our design strips. So we can see that more cleanly. This is calculated rebar. Um, again, the program has designed this by use of the design the sections option. If you double click on any of these bars, bottom rebar is always shown as red. Top rebar is shown as green by default. You can see this is tagged as calculated reinforcement. So the program has calculated this. Um, we can isolate top, bottom, X or Y, going back to rebar, display, manager. You'll notice if I turn off calculated, 
and I leave only base on, there's no base reinforcement in the model. Okay, I'll come back to that and I'll turn on calculated, turn off base, and then I can switch what I'm viewing. And here I'll, I might just want to switch, for example, the X direction and Y direction top rebar. Okay, so this is now the top reinforcement, calculated reinforcement for the slab. Um, now, as, as the user, we can add reinforcement, user-defined reinforcement. Maybe, maybe we want to add a, um, a mesh reinforcement input into the slab or isolated bars or bars in one bay. I'll show you how to do each of those things. I'll turn off the option to show rebar. And using uh, this set of tools here, we can actually model base reinforcement. Okay. Um, this allows us to model base rebar. It has nothing to do with calculated. This is purely base reinforcement. First thing I'll do is model a mesh. So we'll go here and I can either uh, manually input a polygon which defines the mesh region or I can map it to a slab. If I map it, then I'm going to use the wizard. If I manually input, I'll use this option called mesh. Here we're going to put in a bottom mat of reinforcement. We're going to say the bar size is 18 millimeter diameter and then the spacing size we're going to use will be 400 millimeters. We'll create that mesh. Now symbolically the program just shows this circle with kind of a hatching, a grid hatching of the reinforcement. Again red is bottom, green is top. If you go to the visibility options under view settings for reinforcement, mesh reinforcement specifically, you can actually turn on the dimension which will show the bar size and spacing. So this might be helpful if you want to know exactly what's what's going on with that reinforcement. One thing to note is that the program defines rebar based on the slab that it's being input for. So if, if we had another slab, let's assume we had two slabs. We had slab one and slab two. Slab one we would say, let's say is 200 millimeters thick. Slab two is 400 millimeters thick. And when we input this rebar, and here, here we, would, we would have to actually input it as manual input where we actually draw the polygon. Let's assume that we did that. The program will base the depth of the base rebar on the first slab, which is this one. This is ID number one. So here we have a slab that looks something like this. The base rebar at the bottom would actually be here. So if you have this type of an arrangement, you really need to put in two inputs. We would put in the first input here, and that would define this right there. And then we would input another zone of mesh rebar here, and that would define that rebar there. So you have to be aware of, if you have different slabs and different thicknesses, assign mesh rebar to each unique slab region that you have modeled. Okay, if we go to a side view, we can actually see where this bar is. I mean, you can see there that the cover uh, for this reinforcement is defined in the properties of the mesh reinforcement. So, okay, the next thing we'll do is we'll come back over to rebar and we're going to add banded rebar. So I'll just add some top rebar. By default, it shows as... Um, as bottom, but we'll change that. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and change this base rebar. Notice here it's tagged as base. It cannot be converted to calculated because the program calculates reinforcement necessary that's that's required in addition to what we have as the base rebar. So here we'll go ahead and use 18s again. I'm gonna say this is four 18s, and um, we'll do the same here. We'll say this is four number 18 bars or 4 18 millimeter diameter. This will be, be top and we'll just leave the cover settings as 15. Okay, and then we could we could copy this. If this is similar, we could use, um, you know, control C, control V. We could just paste it at different locations as needed. So I'll just add it to all these interior columns. And then finally, maybe we need additional rebar on the outer bays at the bottom of the slab aside from the uh, mesh, so we could use distributed. So I'll go and I'll add some distributed on these two outer bays in the X direction. This is the length of the bar that we defined first, and then we're going to go from this point all the way over to here. And you'll notice by default, 
it sets two bars. Um, we can go into the bar properties. I can adjust the length if needed. Um, and here we'll we'll go ahead and we'll set the spacing to 250 millimeters. And number of bars, we're going to allow the program to calculate that. So I'll turn off fixed. Notice it changes it from 2 to 162 bars over this distribution range that I've set. Okay, so those are the uh, base bottom bars. And I can, again, copy this down to a different location. I'll copy this now down to here. And now we have base reinforcement inside of the um, slab. Because we don't have any post tensioning, all of the design sections were currently um, or are currently being designed as RC sections, two way slab sections. But we want to add some post tensioning, and I'll just add a few cables um, in this model. So we'll do a banded cable here, and I'll leave the drape shown. We're going to change this to 10, 10 cables. The area per strand is 99 square millimeters. And then the shape you can see is reverse parabolas in each of the spans. So we'll just take that one unbonded set of 10 cables and we're going to, I'm going to use Control Shift C to, to copy with a reference point. So I'll just copy that down to each one of these um, lines. And then we're going to do the same in the other direction, but these this will be, let's say, uniform cables. And uh, tendons are considered as base reinforcement. They they add capacity to a slab. They're in the slab, so they're, they're treated similarly to rebar in terms of their presence in the depth of the section and being able to uh, participate in the load carrying capacity of a design section. Now we'll go ahead and run a cable this way. This is going to be a um, an unbonded uh, distributed cable. So we're going to assume that there's just two strands here rather than 10. This is not a band. And again, we'll use the same profile. And I'm actually going to copy this over several times. So we'll go over here to modify uh, by coordinates in the x direction. We're going to space these every one and a half meters. And I'll just say that the number of copies is 30. Okay, we have a few too many there. We'll go ahead and delete this. And I'll just move this in slightly. So we'll go here and put that on that column line. And I can delete out that tendon on the perimeter. So now we have post-tensioning also. If we go into, uh, into visibility, render the model, we can see uh, the reinforcement if we go to a wireframe, for example. We can see the mesh reinforcement, the reinforcement over the columns, and also the post-tensioning. So turning off the columns or the vertical supports and increasing the scaling here, this might help you know, confirm placement of the rebar and the PT uh, in the slab. So this is all base reinforcement. This view would never show calculated reinforcement until after we calculate and display that. This currently is base reinforcement. With this in place, there's a couple of things that we can do. First of all, to turn the tendons off and on, I'll just turn off show tendons. I'll select that, that turns them off on. We know that the tendons are base rebar. And then coming back to um, reinforcement display manager. Now, if I turn off base rebar, you can see this, say okay, the program switches. We turned off the view of the base. Now I'm actually seeing what's calculated. Whenever we, we rerun, the design or the investigation, the program basically resets the calculated rebar. It's no longer there, and it only looks at the base rebar with the concrete section. If it's running investigative, it checks and determines the capacity without any addition of calculated rebar. If you design the section and there is a need to add more reinforcement to meet the demand, for example, for strength or to meet minimum requirements for service, the program will add calculated rebar. So that's what we'll run through now in closing. We're going to um, redesign. We don't have to reanalyze the, the slab. That's been done. We're just going to come back and first we're going to investigate the sections. So when we investigate and we go and we try to produce the rebar graphical layout, you'll notice here 
notice that the calculated rebar went away, but if I come back and I say calculate the rebar, there's a warning that says no rebar is required. That just means that the program didn't produce any calculated rebar. However, it did produce capacity because we have capacity from the tendons and the, the modeled base rebar. So to check capacity, we can always go to analysis, design sections, investigation. We'll first go ahead and display the design sections and then using the investigation option in the result browser under analysis design sections branch, we can check the moment capacity or the moment capacity with demand. So graphically, we can see exactly where a section fails based on our um, base reinforcement. If we check just one of these sections, we can see that graphically we can show the, the capacity of the section. So um, using this option here under the floor design ribbon, strip results visibility, we can turn on uh, the values for each critical section that's checked in the, um, in the slab. And uh, we'll go ahead and just modify the text height under the settings here. We'll just change this, cut it in half and update that. And you can see the program reports positive and negative capacities. Blue is negative, green is the positive graph. Um, if we double click on a section, the program will give us an accounting of the reinforcement in that section. So it will itemize base reinforcement. This is mild non pre stressed reinforcement, the tendon reinforcement. This is really just the area of pre stressing steel and also the calculated rebar. So this is set to zero because we've investigated there should be no calculated rebar. Below that is a design summary showing the criteria and the capacity and demand. Um, where we have pink sections shown, that means that the DCR is greater than one. So looking at a support, we can see this is quite a bit over 3.084. And that's more um, visibly shown if we actually come back and we show the moment capacity with demand. This will show us those over um, uh, regions that have over capacity or over demand, let's say. So this is a result based on in investigation with base reinforcement. Okay, now if we go back, we'll go ahead and just turn off those results. And now we're going to go back and design the sections versus investigate. We don't need to reanalyze, we'll just design the sections now. And now the program will add reinforcement to the sections that are deficient. So again, graphically, if we look at the results, and I go back to moment capacity with demand, we can see there's actually two sections that are flagged pink. And that's more of a, of a designer application convergence than anything. The program will oscillate to determine um, the amount of rebar needed to meet the, the demand. And, and here we may have a section. Graphically, it shows that the DCR is one, but the program graphically will check this flag, pink or green, based on uh, additional significant digits. So if we double click on that section again, you can see this is 1.000. There's a non-zero value somewhere further along in the string. And we have our um, demand here that meets capacity. This is slightly off, um, but you can see the program is now adding calculated rebar, 8,744 millimeters squared to the additional base rebar. And this happens at each section. The program checks this. Um, so if we come back and we check the reinforcement output, if I calculate the rebar plan now for envelope, the program produces a calculated rebar layout. And if I want to show the, the base rebar on top of this, we can always go back to rebar, display manager. I'll turn on the base rebar with the mesh reinforcement. And now we're showing basically all rebar in the in the model. If you have any questions about calculated or base reinforcement in Adapt Builder, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com.